Welcome to Closing the Deal, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of business and sales to unlock the secrets of lasting success. In each episode, we'll be discussing business and sales topics as well as strategies in closing the deal. Get ready to discover actionable strategies, gain practical tips, and ignite your entrepreneurial spirit. Are you ready to take your business and sales game to the next level? Let's get started. All right. So my wins for last week was I was able to do all the projects that um, Sir Jessrael handed over me. I was able to do all the edits. I checked everything on the social media and it's already posted. I'm so happy with it and the outcome on it. And um, my target for today was to do all the projects that Sir Jessrael might um, give to me. And yeah. Those are my wins and um, targets only for this week. And hopefully I'll be getting more projects and a lot of stuff to do. Okay. So you need, you need more projects is what you need. Yeah. I need more projects because I don't like being like nothing. I mean, having nothing to do. I, Dude, I if, you don't have nothing to do <laughs> if you have nothing to do, I want you to reach out to me. I will make sure he gives you plenty. Okay. All right. I'll talk to him as well. Good. Well, let's meet up after this. We'll go over that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right, Richard. Let's hear it, man. Tell me what's going on. So for the wins, uh, last Saturday, so we have work Saturday, and uh, we, uh, Rens already informed me that uh, he'll be, um, he'll be on leave. Uh, this this might be happening end of end of February. So yeah. I need to make sure that uh, I'll be the one to handle the meeting uh, moving forward uh, for the, for that time frame. And uh, he hand over me some links for the leader, leadership program and uh, also the the vision mission of our leftist plumbing services. And we created a time blocking uh, for the both of us so that so that we can agree upon that uh, what we're, what we're going to do for the next hour or a couple of hours so that it will be more efficient on our uh, in our time schedule because uh, Raphael noticed it that we have a uh, plenty of work to do and he wants us to focus on things like if we cannot finish it today then finish it tomorrow and right now we are targeting aside from the uh, property management um I'm also targeting uh, real estate agent and Raphael requested for 400 for that. So I'll finish the the list of 400 that's going to be uh, this this entire entire February and uh 100 for the property management sending initial emails and uh requesting for uh se second email requesting for the uh COI for W9 forms that's need to be sent out. So, yeah, th those were the wins that I got from last Saturday. And for the go today, it's still the same thing. Uh, I need to make sure that to complete the 100 property management, 400 for the real estate, that which I started Saturday. So I got uh, 50, I oh, know, 20, 25, 30, 30 rather. I got 30 for the property management uh, for, for, for the real estate. That's really good. 35 minutes is a lot. That's good. Did you get signed up with them or you just reached out to them? Um, I'm still creating a list or database for me to, to reach out to them. Okay, good. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. I'll take no it. Worries. Appreciate it. All right, Genevieve, let's hear it. Uh, hi, Kellen. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So last week, I was able to meet um Rodney and Angie. It's Rodney's partner. Um, still not sure if what decision have they come up with. And I'm still doing cold calls and I'm doing my lead generation still. Okay. For the client or for us? For you, of course. Okay. All right, we'll check in with that to, at the end of the day. Okay, good. Uh, what would you target today? Well, target for today is um, I wanted to generate 200 leads 
and also um, dial 110, make uh, two transfer to appointments. Perfect. Okay, good. All right, let's see. It's here from Jeremy, man. The long Super Bowl weekend. Did your team win? I didn't even watch. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we had a big job on Saturday that ended up doubling in size. That was a win. Um, team showed up, and it was an itty-bitty, teeny place, but an absolute disaster. Absolute. Mm -hmm. So we got a hold of the uh, property owner. Um, this I, I don't know their exact situation. I need to do some research on them. But it was a company paying to have cleaning done for somebody else. But it, this somebody else was something to do with um, for an exchange or from uh, something to do like that situation. So I'm hoping I can do a little research and get that to open up some doors for some more jobs like this. Mm -hmm. So they they send it to us because it was outside of their franchise area. So yeah, I'll be doing a little bit of research on that today, another Monday. So I'll be spending most of the day just uh, doing accounting stuff and doing payroll. So I, as far as I'm aware, Esther got all her part of payroll done, and I just need to actually do all the transactions and the reporting. So Esther, did you wrap it up? Where are you at, Esther? Not engaged. Morning. Um, Good morning. How you doing? Um, so yeah, I got my part of payroll done. I just had to add the extra hours that the girls did on, on Saturday because they were already past the time I send it. And that that's it. One comes Good. to What's payroll. Your What's your win? Well, What's your start? My win was that we got that job. Um, I spoke to that lady, I think that it was Thursday. I, I think I mentioned that one already and she yeah. kind of, yeah, she kind of told us that there was no budget, but at the same time it looked like, but I'm glad that Jeremy got to speak to her because um, seems like we got a good deal. Uh, also, I got another appointment on Friday. Uh, she wanted to be recurring and say, um, what's the name? I think it's so Lake though. Um, and yeah, that's another one for the team and for me. So target today, get more appointments into schedule as well as to kind of arrange the, arrange the calendar for this week and next one. Cause I saw there was like a couple of appointments that, um, I think she froze. Nope. That's okay. Like, is it just me? <laughs> no, it's <she's> from... <laughs> Oh, she's back. Yes, she's back. There she is. Oh, yeah. You got your appointments. You got coming up. You're managing them. That's the target, right? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. All right, Team Adaptive. Jared, let's hear it, man. So I sold two jobs over the weekend, a tankless and a big remodel. So I'm super excited about that. Um, Goal for today is now I got to get it all lined up and I got I got a couple jobs we got to get wrapped up so booyah okay booyah is right how much and what's the revenue on that between the two uh should be like twenty five thousand dollars dude that's huge I don't know I don't that's not all revenue but yeah yeah that's good. Okay, what and your target today is to get get it prepared, get the job cleaned up. I mean, that's happen. revenue, not prop. That's revenue, not profit. So yeah, yeah, revenue. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand profits hard to figure out sometimes. So, okay, good. Target today is to get get the job prepared. Is that the target? Yeah, I just kind of saw the guy talking. I there was three different estimates. So yeah, I got to get the parts ordered and get everything ready to go. Okay, so good, perfect. All right, let's see. Uh, Lorraine, your side of the adaptive plumbing. Um, yeah, Friday I was able to transfer a call to Jared. Uh, I was for with a contractor, so he had that touch base. Um, he just had um, 
we're still not sure if that's something that we can do, though I, th I believe I heard he said that he's thinking of it, if it's something Well, we can. it's a it's a big custom home. I haven't really stepped into the realm of new construction yet for my company, but I'll figure it out. Whatever it takes. Hire the right Just... people to get the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Price it high. Custom homes, they know they're one 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 custom contractor told me says, I don't care what it costs, I just care if it's done perfectly. It's basically what we're tracked homes were like all they cared about what it was a cost, right? So it was very different. Uh, uh it was almost like you had to shift gears. Like they weren't as they weren't as price sensitive, right? Because they could just increase the price of the house, but they wanted to make sure it was like premium everything, but they wanted it done So quick, they I told wanted him, it done quick. I, I told him it's not going to be the cheapest. I, I don't know what other people are charging right now, but You'll, you'll literally just he crack told me, he told, he's like, he's like, this is my first custom home. I'm from like Argentina or something where I used to do it there. I don't know. But he's like, the, the price differences are crazy here. I got like a, a, a price to do all the, um, framing for like 30,000 to 150,000. So. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful with that for sure. Because sometimes they might like the price, you know, well, it's just, just different because especially in construction, they assume certain things. Certain generals will assume their subs will cover certain things where certain ones won't. Like I know I had one contractor, like I did not hook up the condensers where the other ones did. It wasn't that much of a big deal, but it was like it changed a big deal for my side because it depends on if I'm bringing it, if I'm tying it in, if it's going to take another trip, like who's venting the water heater, who's firing it off. So it was a lot of like those little unspoken rules, you know. Yes, sir. So it's good. So just be super detailed. From what I'm from, from contractors, be as detailed as you can as proposal, and then they they know what to expect. Be like, hey, did you guys catch the game? And nobody watched the freaking Super Bowl. I mean, I caught the game. It was intense. <laughs> you didn't ask me. Right, you me? I watched me. the I game. What's that? Me and Aaron, Brendan watched watch the game. Heck yeah, Brendan, I did. did game? Of course I watched the game. What kind of question is that? <laughs> did you cut the game? I, now I can I can bro out because I never do it. I never yeah, watch Yeah, let's bro out, man. <laughs> Eric, it went you don't count. You're not here. Yeah, Eric doesn't count. So, yeah, it went overtime. It was kind of cool. Very intense. It was a good game. Kind of cool is extremely cool, man. What do you mean kind of cool? So anyway, somebody uh, somebody share with me. I want to hear you what stood out to you the most. Teach me a principle here. Somebody give me a principle, Todd. Okay. Um, uh, all right. For, oh, no, okay. go on, go Gilbert. Ahead, you, you got it. All right. Um, well, for me, it's about control and manage. Uh, <clears throat> the difference between control and manage. Either you want to control your time or you're, you want to manage it. But the difference is the difference between controlling and managing managing comes a lot of time i mean i mean you have to have a lot of time for you to be able to manage it but when you be able to control it you'll be able to either cram it make sure to um like have a sequence of the times like 15 minutes just like what grand cardona mentioned every 15 minutes you'll be doing a lot of stuff either you cram on it either you're doing a lot of stuff in every 15 minutes as well as um scheduling your day in 15 minutes blocks that is the one that hit me hard as well of course the quality time of your family hit me hard as well but the scheduling of your day in every 15 minutes block there's a lot, of, I mean, Grant Cardone have mentioned that there's a lot of things that you can do in every 15 minutes, as long as you know how to control it, as long as you know how to do or what you want to do in every 15 minutes that you have. Either you want to make a 15 phone calls, 15 dials, anything that you want to do in a, in a 15 minutes, as well as making quality time of your family every day. You really have to control your time because we never know. Um when the time comes, we'll never know when was the last time we spent time with our family, even through phone calls. They would pretty much appreciate the phone calls because hearing your voices, hearing our voices, it would make them feel appreciated, feel seen, and a lot more. So basically, those are the stuff that I learned from Grand Cardone today. It's a matter of control and management and having time with your family. Good. Perfect. Brennan, what, you, what was yours? Um, it was actually, I'll just actually piggyback off that because that's what stood out to me. 
um, the whole lesson kind of make me made me look at everything introspectively uh, because I always feel like there is not enough time in the day. Um, I have three kids. And when you have three children running around at home, plus your wife and then your father-in-law living there, you're like, I, I don't get a second to myself at all. But I think in reality, I don't really want a second to myself. Um, I, I think more often than not, a lot of us will say, gosh, I wish I could just have some alone time. I wish I could get away. But when you're getting away, you're taking away from valuable time you could be spending with your family. Because as Gilbert just said, and as Chris is experiencing right now, uh, life is short and time is valuable. Um, so if we can learn to control and be masters of our own time, uh, I feel like we're going to enjoy life on so many different levels. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the key is there is too is control it, don't manage it, right? right. You don't, don't try to manage time. We don't want to manage the world, right? We, we don't want to manage uh, uh, traffic. That sounds miserable. But if you were to control traffic, you tell it where it goes. You know, it's kind of like the idea of reactive versus uh, proactive, right? right? Be proactive with your time instead of reactive, planning ahead in advance. And so he talks about when you plan out your, you know, so have a calendar, right? That's rule one. If we, Some people don't use calendars. I mean, I know for years I didn't use calendar. Now I live and die on my calendar, right? So instead of, and everybody likes to block out an hour, one hour for cold calling. I'm going to spend one hour on payroll. I'm going to spend one hour on estimates. Instead of doing that, break down that hour into uh, four 15-minute segments. I'm going to spend 15 minutes on doing the, uh, uh, approving the hours. I'm going to spend 15 minutes on going on, on QuickBooks, whatever that may be i'm gonna spend 15 minutes calling contractors i'm gonna see how many how many calls i can make inside that 15 minutes and sh and really like trying to like control the time so jared's taking off all right so that's the idea so it's controlling the time not making it control you because if you don't control your time somebody's going to control your time right so use 15 minutes don't manage time literally control it control your environment by controlling your time. Another thing I've learned too is, is saying no to certain things, right? Saying no to distractions. Don't let people break into those 15 minutes. And that goes same kind of we talked about with the family, right? I know I remember I was I was scheduling my time and I listened to this video the first time and I thought, okay, I'm gonna schedule time on my calendar for my wife. I'm literally gonna block out an hour, right? One hour for just me and my wife. I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to look right at her. And one hour with Kellen, I mean, she, dude, that's a long freaking time. She, she didn't last an hour. She lasted about 30 minutes and then she wanted me to go do something else, right? So it's an, an intense hour, right, with just your spouse. That's almost too much. An intense hour with my children, usually they're, cr they're crying because we wrestled too hard and they got hurt, right? So like block out your time, <laughs> And it's amazing what happens when you literally block it as one hour and an intense one hour. That's almost more than the kids can handle. They don't need they don't need they just need consistency. Right. They want to know dad is consistent. Mom is consistent. And it's the same time they can plan on a kid's love routine. So, yes, good. Very good point. OK, I want somebody else. So schedule the time. Man, don't control your time. Don't manage the time and then block out the family. OK. All right. Come on. Somebody else. This is this, these are a bunch of good ones in this one. Give me somebody else in here. Somebody teach me something. Come on. Stand out. Richard, come on. What'd you learn? Nika? Same as Brandon, though. Um, it's uh, uh, family time. and But I'll take the number two, which is schedule your day in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes block. So as, as what you made mention, like for for 15 minutes, what you, get, what, what you can do. It's like uh, for 15 minutes, I can finish like 10 calls for cold calling for 15 minutes. I can finish the uh, researching of doing the um, real estate agents for 15 minutes. Uh, how many, how many I can complete uh, for how, how, how many email sent text messages, second email sent for, for that 15 minutes so that I can go over to all of my tasks. It's not, it's not merely really like calling them, but at least it's, it's I'm not, gonna waste my time of doing nothing like i can yeah, do something you don't have any time you say oh i don't have enough time. I'm, I'm i'm busy as it is right now dude what, what i mean just set the clock back 
right? Yeah. Get up. That's what I did. Like I wanted 15 minutes before I go to the gym just to like I sit on the couch, I read my news email, it comes in, it tells me about all the highlights going on in the world. And I love it. I love that time and I can listen to I can read my news. So I just set my clock back 15 minutes. So I wake up 15 minutes earlier. I get my news time in. I feel I feel educated. I feel smarter, right? I listen to my books. So so yeah. So if if you don't have time, dude, make time. Set the clock back fifteen minutes. Where are you wasting time? I told. I remember I was meeting with Eric, and we were doing a one to one, and he's like, "Well, I don't have any time." I'm like, "Dude, why are you stop scheduling after five o'clock? Does anybody have a calendar that like stops at five? I go home at five o'clock. Oh, I don't schedule nothing for five. Dude, schedule it out, right? What are you doing at? for dinner what when do you eat dinner what are you doing for family game night what are you doing for uh night kind of studies right when are you go to the gym is it night or in the morning like literally schedule from when your eyes open until your eyes close schedule when you put that phone down esther schedule when you study right esther you gotta get that sleep in you gotta actually schedule the time to sleep esther right i do i have my uh, here is everything this is like my Different book of life if you lost that, how crazy, how how terrible would it be? Well, I still have my phone. I do the, I do like a copy on my phone in the cloud oh, and on notes. Yeah. Have- You're controlling you time. Controlling I have it. to. I do too many things. So I need yeah. to be on top of it. My 24 hours had to last like 36 or something. Like that. <laughs> there you go. You're just stretching it, right? You're stretching the time. Okay. Yes, Good. Sir. All right. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Nika, come on, man. I want to hear from you before we move on. You're not engaged. You're not locked in. Sorry, my bad. Good morning again. So um, I guess what really hit me was the making time or quality time for your family or for my family. Uh, well, because when I become... Uh, a young mom, I didn't get that much time to spend with uh, myself first. So I have to to tend to this, uh, to my daughter and then put away my uh, studies and then go to work. So I guess um, right now I'm still battling with that time management because all along, well, all this time I thought it was about time managing or managing time. But instead, I just have to control it. So just like Esther, right now I'm crazy with my alarms, with my calendar. Um, I'm crazy with the, my itinerary for the day. So even though I don't have that much um, stuff to do with uh, within the household or with uh, with my work, I you know I find time to. Um, how do you call it? I, I how do you call it? I, I find something that I've been missing. Maybe like doing my previous hobbies, like painting or drawing. So I I put that into that tiny schedule or that hectic schedule that I have if I have time for it. And I think um going back to our family. I also have a bad habit of ignoring texts and messages. So this really hit me big time. So even with that millisecond that you know you received that message, you just have to reply to it. Even if it's very annoying, even if you're trying to cut off some family members, you really have to, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's still your family. So my biggest takeaway is to just, you know, to make time for your family. That's it. So that you won't have any regrets in the future. Good. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, um, uh, I was actually in church on Sunday, and I was teaching the lesson about uh, the prophet Nephi. He was getting close to his time of dying, and he was getting close, and he actually brought his family around, and he said, I won't come around. I know I'm going to die soon. Let me teach you, bless you, prophesy, right? So it's kind of, and I, our lesson was, if you if today was your last day, 
what, what, what text message would you send? Who would you send it to, right? Did you spend enough time on it? What would you share with them on that time, right? Now, if, if you if you set that time aside and you control the time, what would you do if you had only had a day, 24 hours, right? You wouldn't be wasting time, right? So think about when you're wasting time. So here's the exercise, okay? I want you guys to do this on your calendar. Everybody pull up your calendar right now. If you don't got one, dude, open a piece of blank piece of paper. Open up your calendar. If there's any white spaces, meaning if there's any spots that have nothing in there, fill it in. Create a, What I like to do first, I create a goal sheet, and then I create a to-do list, if I can show it to you, of my goals, right? And then the next thing I do is I make sure my calendar has the, go, the to-do. So I want to make a goal, and I want to take a step cl cl closer to that goal, and I want to make sure it's on my calendar. So hold your calendar. Right, every pull up the calendar. I know there's white spaces, right? Even lunch is a white space. Lunch. Uh, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna sit there and eat my sandwich for, for one hour. Nobody does that for an hour, right? Literally, plan out your lunch. What are you gonna because everybody they do get on Facebook, TikTok. What do you do, Esther, for your lunch hour? I just gotta veg for an hour. Right? Come on, <laughs> you, you, are you a vegger? Do you veg? Uh, no, if I'm honest with you, I sometimes eat while I work. I, I always want to be honest. Well, uh, I sometimes sleep. Not really. It's that I get bored, and if I can do something, I'll do it. But I've been working on my lunch, and sometimes I just take a break to sleep 30 minutes and then go okay. back. Okay. As long as you plan, what I want you to do is plan it, schedule it. I don't want any thought. Literally, go on your calendar and just write it down. I like to go off my to do list. And then go right on my counter. This to-do list, go with this 15 minutes. This to-do list, just bring it over, right? No white spaces. No, what are you going to do this time? I don't know. Fill out every single minute on your counter. That is the exercise, okay? So pull it up. Nika, you got your calendar open? Pull it up. You got white spaces, Richard? Huh? Lorraine, do you got some white spaces on your calendar? Fill it in. And if you're like Gilbert, it's like, I got nothing to do. Dude, come up with something. Call your supervisor. Says, give me something. I got 30 minutes here. I need to fill in. Give me I something. I will. I just looked up my calendar and I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of white spaces in here. And I was like, what am I, what else am I going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Fill it in. Okay. Yeah. If you don't have yeah. anything, you need to be bugging your supervisor or your client. Dude, I need something to do. I, I need will. something to do. I need something to do. And then give them suggestions. Hey, I can do this, this, or this. Which one would you like? Right? Don't just come out of blank. Say, hey, could I post on social media? I got some pictures online. I need it. I think we should just change in the website. Or I'm going to make some phone calls today. I don't care. Pull up your white count. Pull up your calendar. Check the white spaces. Okay? Will do. Okay. All right. Let's do the morning meeting. Meeting uh, closed today. The rash decision closed, okay? Who's going to introduce it? Gilbert, you ready? Brendan. Brendan's going to introduce it. Hey, Brendan, tell us about this close. You want me to read it to you or explain why? Oh, yeah. when to me. Tell me about it. Brendan, okay. It. <laughs> okay. The rash decision closed. Sorry, guys. My voice is still coming back to me a little bit, so I sound extra hoarse. Um, but... I understand, and the reality is it would be impossible to consider any decision you made at this point a rash decision. You want the product, you need the product, and I could even say that you love the product. Let's do this. Okay, why, why, would, why would you use this close? So this is if a customer or a potential prospect is doubting uh, making the moving forward because they think it's it's too rash of a decision or it, it's too soon to make that call. Good. Yes, exactly. This, that, this could be used for, uh, I just got to look at other, I got to make sure it's a good decision. I got to make sure it's a right decision. Maybe I, I got to think about it. You could use this one. Hey, I understand the reality is you thinking about it, it would be impossible for you to consider the decision a bad decision or a rash decision at this point, right? You want the product, you need the product. I could even say, you love the product, so let's do this, right? Rash decision. Sometimes you get that when it's the first thing, like you just met them. I know at like a home and garden shows or idea of getting a virtual assistant, so let's sign this. And I've, I've signed, you know, four or five people on one expo before just by pushing them, and then they knew it was a good decision. They signed right then. So 
rash decision. People don't need time to make decisions. They don't think about it once they walk away, right? So the idea right. is, is you're you're giving them confidence that it would be impossible to consider this decision a rash decision at this point, right? Because of where you're at. You've been through this. You've already been working on this guy. You've been trying to follow this guy for the last six months or whatever, and he still doesn't want to make a rash decision. It would be impossible to consider this a rash decision at this point. You've fully thought about it. You're ready to go. Let's lock and load. Move forward. Okay, good. All right, so, Brennan, you ready? Let's do it. <clears throat> hey, um, I, I just want to make sure I think about all these decisions before moving forward. I just don't want to make a rash decision. Ellen, I, I understand and the reality is it would be impossible to consider any decision you made at this point a rash decision. You want this product. You need this product. And I can confidently say you love this product. So uh, let's make this happen right now. No, I appreciate that. I just really need to think about it. Listen, it doesn't take time to make decisions. It takes more information. And the problem is we think the more time we wait, the more information we gain. Seeing as I'm your only source of information, let's go ahead and get this done. Ooh, is that a Sam Elliott close? <laughs> That's a good one, huh? I That's like that one, one a lot. Good. Yeah, I want to memorize. I want to use it. Good one. Yeah, okay. Listen, um, yeah, you're right. I do need more information. Can you send me over some information so I can make a decision? Better yet, what I'm going to do is have this information sent over to you right now. We're going to take a look at it. Um, you can, I can answer any questions or concerns you have, and then we can go ahead and sign, and and now we'll be good to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me just talk to my spouse real quick and make sure we're, we're all on board, but I think this is a good decision. You need to talk to your spouse. Uh, does your spouse trust you? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. Seeing as she trusts you, she's going to be happy with whatever decision you make today. So let's go ahead and make her happy, and uh, – you know, you can always you can always ask for it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is permission, right? Oh man, I, I, I don't I don't want to ask for forgiveness. I've been in bad hot water before. <laughs> well, being in hot water is not always a bad thing. You could be in cold water, right? Good point. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and sign this. I'm sure she'll be more than happy to know that you hired on a VA and that you can increase your productivity and profits. Am I right? Much feedback on that one. Uh, yeah, you were good. Your confidence level were up. I think you felt pretty good about it. it you made it light and lighthearted. It wasn't like a crazy hard decision. Overall, it was pretty good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yep, keep it up. Okay, uh, something else. Let's see. Who do, you, who do you want to pick on, Brendan? Pick on somebody. Jeremy, let's get it, man. <laughs> okay. Give me the objection, Brendan. Uh, you know, you know it, it sounds great. But it uh, just uh, seems like a, a rash decision if I'm just going to go ahead and sign this now. I understand. I, I, that, I get, sorry. I totally get that. And the reality is it, wouldn't, it would be impossible to consider any decision at this point a rash decision. You know you need the cleaning. You've been planning on it for a while. It's not rash any, any way I look at it or view it. Um, I mean, at this point, you don't have time to do the cleaning yourself. So I'd even say you'd love the product because you'd love the me taking that off your plate. So let's move forward with it. Gosh, it's uh, you know, I'm just I'm I'm just kind of struggling with the price. It seems a little bit high. You're right. Time is money. How do you value your own time? Is the real question. Most of my clients. I'll have the ability to clean their own home. But when they look at their day and they look at how they value their time, it is not worth their time to clean their property. So either because they are, would rather do something they love, do something they enjoy and make money doing it or make something that's a higher priority like time with the family. Let us take that off your plate and why don't you go to the movies or go back into work and make a lot more money than you're uh, paying us. All right, man. Let's go ahead and do it. Man. You got me. That was good. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> good job, man. Uh, yeah, that was that was a really smooth delivery. 
you just have this 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 smooth wisdom with your delivery that that works so well for you. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't really have anything to say back to that. That was good. I'm working on it still, but thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, uh, question though, do you get that a lot? It's a lot of money, and then you go to the time and per hourly rate. They they hit you on the hourly rate. Uh, yeah, some people will hit me with that. Literally, that's their first question. That's all they care about. And if that is like prefer? their number one priority, they've already closed the door before I have a chance to negotiate or talk. Um, so yeah, just at that point. I don't know when that's their first question is what's your hourly rate? Like avoiding the question is not going to get me anywhere, but trying to give them the answer, but argue it is still not going to get me anywhere. So I've just learned to accept that half the time that's a bad fit for me anyways. And yep. that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if, they, if, if people come and say, what's your hourly rate? Just give it to them. If they leave and say, oh, I'm just shop price up on you. Dude, go ahead. You're not my client anyways. Right. Like, like just give it to them and let them walk away. I I don't, I wouldn't say fight them either. If that's all they're looking for straight hourly, dude, pull them in the rises. I know so-and-so who works illegally. You can go hire that guy or that company. They don't pay their employees anything. I, I don't know. Right. Like, like you get what you pay for. Yeah. Here you go. Right. Pass them on. Like I have no issue. I will never apologize for high prices. I never will, right? I won't apologize for charging more than competitors. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But what, I'm, what I think I was asking is, is that the, you had a little spiel right there, a little, little uh, thing you said, well, I understand and your hourly rates, what's versus your hourly rate versus the, my hourly rate, what's it worth to you? It'd be great if you had that, like, I think you were winging it, right? And you've said that a lot. you go to the hourly rate thing what could you do to write it down to make it super concise right like if it was a scripted thing like somebody asks this you say i understand it's a lot of money per hour right and then you can say what's your next thing you can you do gotta decide what's worth more to you a clean house or or spending time with the family right is 180 dollars a month worth more to you than than uh than, than coming home to dirty dirty house that's what you got to decide for you one thing i know for a fact is this boom boom whatever that would it be but it'd be wonderful if you actually write it down and then have it like like perfectly written and spoken every single time that's what i'm thinking about right if we were to write a response to that your own clothes you know what i mean like what was the thing and you say it every time the same way because your main thing is is it price or value you know what's it worth yeah. to you so you, if we'd have like an actual script of value, you know, that would be super interesting to see what you could say every single time is, is, uh, you know, one, one people never say, I wish I had a cleaner home at, on, you know, when, when their kids are off to college, they never think about that is I wish I spent more time with my kids and fuck, forgot about the smudges on the windows, right? Whatever that script would be. I think that'd be something that could be really fire. If you had your own little dialogue of that, you know, yeah. for clean, for yeah, just clean. Sense. So, but yeah, I think the main thing there would be um, uh, like clean people says, how much money is it? I, I always, my mind always goes to, hey, I know it's a lot of money. It's crazy how much money is, th how much things cost nowadays. Labor's insane. What day would you like us to start doing the, what, what day would you like us to start doing the installs, right? Just like agree with them and then click. That's the first one, right? Is he really, the question was, Brendan, were you really objecting to the price or were you just complaining? I was complaining. <laughs> If it's a complaint, yeah, I know, dude. This is crazy. I filled up my car the other day and it was 150 bucks. Oh my gosh, it's nuts. What day would you want to have a clean home? Today, tomorrow, the next day. Right? Like, like that's my first instinct says that. Go there. But if it becomes a true objection, which you probably get those a lot, it is a lot of money. Perfect. And every one of my clients say that until they see the cleaning services and the value we bring and the time they save to be had with their family instead of worrying about the dust on baseboards. You should not be cleaning dust on baseboards. That should be our job, and you should be spending time with your family, right? Boom. You know, let's move this out. Whatever that. That's what I'm saying. Like, what? Something. Something. I, I even think something small, like dust on baseboards, or or you know, dusting the chandeliers, like something crazy that needs to get done. But dude, should you be really the one doing it? Like, should that be your job? You know, it's it's insane. So, like, like you got your your guys cleaned my office the other day. Beautiful. I didn't have to worry about the smudges on the windows and the floor. I actually, I was actually waiting for you guys to show up because I was eating food at my desk and all the crumbs were all and falling over. I'm like, I should pick these up. I'm like, well, I don't have to do anything. I, I just got to wait for the cleaners to show up. This is nice. I can just focus on what I want to focus on, you know? So... <laughs>
And then I come yes. home, I come back to the office, beautiful clean windows, perfectly clean desk. And they took out the trash, which I didn't even ask them to do that. So thank you. Good job, team. Esther, tell your tell your cleaners I appreciate that, by the way. And they put a liner in my bag as well. It was well above and beyond. I even explained didn't expect it. So they did great. Good. I'll tell them. Good. I'll I'm tell glad them. to hear that. Yep. Okay, good. All right, perfect. Okay, Jeremy, who are you picking on? Uh, let's go with, uh, go with Richard. Richard. You ready? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, Jeremy, give him an, obje an objection. All right. Um, it's just going to be really expensive. Like that, that sticker shocked me. I did not expect it to be that much. Um, so I, I, I feel like if I sign with you right now, it, it's just a rash decision. Well, I agree with you, Jeremy. Well, I understand. And, uh, the reality is, is it would be impossible to consider any decision you made at this point is a rash decision. You want the, you want the, the water heater, you need the water heater. And, uh, I could even say that you love the, uh, you love the water heater who, who, who don't want uh, their water to to be hot during in the morning. Let's sign right here. No, but sometimes an ice shower is just worth it. You know. Exactly. I can do that for a few more days. <laughs> right, and uh, may know what what makes you hold up to this decision. Is it the is it the money, the down payment, or is it the the price as, as a whole? Oh, I, I it's just the price as a whole. Like I, I didn't expect it to be that many digits, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, Jeremy. Well, we have a good news for you because uh right now we have a, a one month zero down and the rest of the of the amount will be we can we can do an an installment though. Um I, I hate paying interest. I'm anti-interest, though. Zero, zero interest. Oh, no. Now you should have started with that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, hey, right sounds here. good. <laughs> All right. There you go. I already sent you the contract. And thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Richard. Okay, good. So there you go. Zero interest. You should have started with that. You're right. It's my fault. I'm so sorry I didn't say that first. What day would be a good day to do the install, right? He, he says, <laughs> I don't have a problem with interest. He didn't say anything about financing. He just had a problem with interest, right? Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, that was good, Richard. Hey, don't worry. There's no interest on this. And he's like, what are you going to say to that, right? Move on with it. So, yeah, very good. Very good, J Richard. Uh, one thing I would say is uh, I think sometimes you're a little bit choppy. I want you to smooth out a little bit, right? Kind of smooth out. And and when you guys agree, a lot of people just say, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. I hear you. Oh, dude, I totally understand what you're saying. I I, I feel what you're I feel where you're coming from. I felt the same way, too. Right? Like, like, instead of just saying I agree, change up some of the agreement things you say. Right. I understand. Yep. I hear that. I, you know, it's you just say I agree. I agree. I agree. It sounds robotic and salesy and then it doesn't work right so you got to sound genuine i guess that was my main thing for a lot of you virtual assistants sound genuine have an actual conversation but agree okay yes sir all right everybody hey welcome to work go kick some ass everyone bye 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 guys all right thank you thank you for joining us on this episode of closing the deal we hope you found today's discussion insightful and inspiring remember True success in business and sales requires continuous learning and growth. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for future episodes packed with even more valuable content. Until next time, keep striving, stay motivated, and never stop reaching for your goals.